Hi guys! So today's video is all about helping you guys find a hostel job and the video is going to be about finding paid hostel jobs because I'm sure if you're looking for one already and you found this video then a lot of them are volunteers so um, they're asking for people to work a few hours a day in exchange for a bed but I want to help you find one that is paid. If you're still on the edge about whether or not you want to start working in hostels I'll give you a tip on the good things. So one of the best things about it is it gives you an opportunity for slow travel, which means that instead of going from city to city, seeing all the main churches and the main statues that you've seen in Lonely Planet, and then you get home and you're not really sure which statue is in which city, um, slow travel and working in hostels means that you get to spend maybe a month, maybe even two, um, I know I spent seven in Budapest, really getting to know the locals um, the way of life over there and really just essentially living in a different country than you were brought up into. Um, that's really the best thing about working in a hostel. The other good thing is that if you do get paid, you get the chance to save a bit for your next trip um, or you know the next place that you're going to go after, after that country. Okay, so there are two main ways to find hostel work. The first one is to find it whilst you're traveling. I know so many people who go to a hostel and they fit in with the staff straight away. The manager loves them. Um, I know that when I was working in hostels, there was people that I would just absolutely get on with straight away, travelers who were thinking, oh, I wouldn't mind earning a bit of money. Um, and you work with the staff that are already there and go up to the manager and say, oh, you know, I'd really like a job. Um, this is a great way to find paid work because the manager's already met you. He knows that you get on with the staff and they know your personality. Um, what kind of stuff you're good at doing, if you're really social and bubbly, that's a really important thing for working in hostels, and they'll have seen that already. Um, you can also, if you decide later on in your travels that, oh man, I really want to go back to this hostel, let them know, give them an email, and they might be looking for work. So you can not just only go back there and see the people that you enjoyed hanging out with before, but you can save some money on accommodation and possibly even earn some, um, because they'll be looking for work by the time that you're going back. The second option is to find a job before you go travelling. So what happened to me last year was I went away, I got on really well with a few hostels, um, but they were actually closing, uh, it was about October, September, October time, and they were closing for the winter. So I knew I couldn't work in those, um, but I came back and I couldn't bear the thought of you know finding a graduate job, growing up basically. So I decided to find a job on my computer and then fly out there. Um, the one thing that you really do need, whilst a lot of people don't think that you'll need it is uh, to make yourself a CV. It doesn't need to be as professional as other CVs, although it needs to look nice um, like any other one does. But a really great thing to put on there is to make sure um, that you put down if you traveled before, if you know any languages, if you specialize in anything, so surfing, perhaps uh, yoga. Um, and the other thing that you may not put on your normal CV is to make sure you put links to your Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, blog, you know, whatever one of those that you're on, or all of them, if you're on all of them, because such a huge part of hostel work is being social and being able to talk to people um, in two ways. You want to be able to give great customer service, but also act like a friend to these guests that are coming in. So make that really, really clear on your CV and make sure there are pictures on there too. Um, big pictures of you smiling. A smile always helps. So once you have your CV together, you can either send it off to hostels that you stayed at before, uh, which I mentioned is one thing that you can do whilst you're traveling as well. And then the other option you've got is to find a job on your computer. So where would you start? I found my job on hosteljobs.net. Um, both hosteljobs.net and there is another site, hostelmanagement.com. They're really, really similar in their layout. They essentially have forums, and on their forums they have two main options. The first one is hostel jobs available, um, and this is great for paid work. There are other sites around, you've got WorkAway, you've got HelpX. Most of the jobs listed on those websites, they're looking for volunteers, people who are going to work for a free bed and not for any pay. There's the listing websites you can use. There's Craigslist, which is um, obviously really, really good in America. Um, but it's expanded other places too, so check that one out. And gumtree.com, which is amazing for Europe, especially the UK. Um, I'm constantly seeing hostel jobs listed on those websites. So listing sites are a great place to look as well if you want to step away, if you can't find anything on the specialised ones. 
Another place you can look, which you might not have thought of, is Twitter, uh, which is an amazing source for so many different jobs, especially hostel jobs. Um, there are two main feeds. So you've got at hostel-jobs. Um, again, I'm going to put these in the description. But that one is actually run by hosteljobs.net. So probably most of the jobs that go on there will be the ones on their website that saves you checking every day. If you already check your Twitter already or every day, then you know use that site. And then the other one is at Hostel Jobs. Really simple. Um, they're great at pulling together hostel jobs that are listed all over the internet and throwing it onto your newsfeed. So most of the websites and techniques that I've suggested so far, they work really well for small, um, like family run or locally run hostels that are looking for people to work for them. They have a very different vibe to the big hostel corporations. Um, I'm talking about St. Christopher's or Hostling International. Those websites use much different ways of hiring people. There's usually a process. It's not just a case of walking up to someone and saying, hi, I'd like to work for you. You sometimes have to apply online. Um, you need to know different languages and there's a whole process with interviews. You know, it's much more formal. But if you are looking for something like that, then the best thing is to head to their websites and they'll probably have a careers page. I know that um, both Hostling International and St. Christopher's have their own like work with us careers page and you can apply online. But they also have Twitter feeds. So um, Hostling International, if you go to at HIUSA jobs, then you'll be able to see when a new job goes up on there. So a great thing to do with the Twitter ones is put them all together in one list and um, you can just click on the list and see how often it gets updated and see if any new tips come up. So I'm going to leave you with a final two tips. The first one is if you have any languages, make sure that you let people know because languages are really, really useful, especially if you know the language of the country that you want to work in. So I unfortunately only know English, but if I would say was working in Germany, I know that a lot of hostels in Germany, they want you to know German as well. Um, and English is usually a main language, so it's great for me, but not so great for maybe someone who comes from uh, Morocco and doesn't know too much English, but they do know German. It's still great to know English as a base and then have a few other languages that you can work with. And um, my second tip, I mentioned it before, but just if you have any specialisms like surfing, yoga, perhaps you're a first aid hiker, just make sure you put that on your CV or mention it to a manager because they love that stuff and it really, really helps. I know I love that stuff and when I was looking for potential people to work with us, um, I don't know anything about first aid and I definitely couldn't get a job in a surf camp as a surf instructor. So it just gives you a few more options when you're um, looking for something great for you. So again, thanks for watching guys. I hope that has really helped. If you wanna see any of my other videos, then make sure you hit subscribe and then also the thumbs up button uh, really lets me know if I'm doing a good job or not because I'm pretty new to this. Um, again, I've answered a question that I get asked a lot. Um, like last week I asked, a qu asked the question how to choose the perfect hostel because people send me that a lot on Facebook. If you have any suggestions about stuff that you don't wanna know, it doesn't have to be hostel specific. Just pop that in the comments and I'll try and get a great video on for you guys next week about something that you want to hear about. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next Friday.